Okay, moving on. So let's say that we want to do some hardware monitoring for a recording context, like we're recording a band, okay? So we're listening to outputs one and two, and we want to send some of these input signals directly to it. So let's say one and two, three, four, five, six. Let's say for seven and eight, that's going to be a vocal, so we want that to be mono. We're going to unlink, just do the left channel, and we're going to pan that into the center, okay? So now the, all of that's going out one and two. We're set it up exactly the way we want. We can adjust the levels here as well to make sure that things sound right to the talent. Now we can just go ahead and store this as a scene. Let's choose the scene one position. And then if you double click into it, you can name it. So let's go ahead and call that recording. Okay, so now let's say that there's another context we work in though, and it's nothing at all like this. Like maybe we're doing mastering, let's say. And in that case, we just wanna go ahead and set things up to their defaults on the input side. We don't really care about inputs in this context, so we're gonna collapse that panel. And let's say that we have our first pair of outputs is speakers, and we just want two uh, playback stems going to that output. So we're going to unmute play three and four. Play one and two is already assigned by default. But we want those same signals going to the second pair of speakers, which is output three and four. So we're going to go ahead and unmute one and two and three and four there as well. Let's say in that context, we also want the trims for outputs five through eight set to minus 10. So we're going to set that as well. Now let's save that as a scene in the scene two position. Double click and let's go ahead and name that mastering. So now what's really cool about this is that you can go back and forth between those scenes with one click. It's very, very quick. Oh, there we go. It'll even, the, the screens will collapse that are not applicable as well. So it reflects kind of the way you left it. So. Anyhow, very, very handy and a great way to harness the power of the routing that's available to you and in control very, very quickly. Now, one thing to be conscious of, since it is one click, if you were going to rename a scene and you click that scene, you're going to change to that scene before you have a chance to rename it. So make sure you're conscious of that when you click into there. So I mentioned in passing the trims. The trims come down below here. Um, so the... The Aurora in hardware allows you to toggle between plus four and minus 10 in banks of four. And that's for both inputs and outputs. So we have an eight channel line IO uh, model here. If you had more channels than that, you'd obviously see more trim choices available to you there, okay? Uh, the other thing you can do from the in-control software is access the record and playback capabilities with the micro SD card that are built into the Aurora in hardware. That's very, very handy. So as you can see, you have your standard controls. We have a, a session with some tracks playing back from the SD card right now. It'll show you the session you're in, the take you're in. You get the increment counters for how far into the file and how far from the end of it. Um, very, very handy. Now we've implemented media control from keyboards as well. So if you have a keyboard that has media controls, those are implemented with the uh, transport controls here as well. With a like Mac laptop, F8 would be play as an example. Um, so in addition to playback, you can also invoke recording. And so if you had a signal going in, it would be recording right now. And when you hit play, it automatically will have incremented up to take seven. Six was previously our last one. Um, but one thing you should be aware of is that setting up the sessions, naming them, uh, setting up which channels are gonna be recorded, naming takes, these are all functions that still need to be done from the function menu on the Aurora Inn. Um, so for now, it's mainly just for invoking play and record, but that's quite handy if you're in a remote recording se session or something and you need to do a confidence recording just to be able to do that from the computer rather than the front panel of the Aurora Inn.